All right, so we've just wrapped up uh, discussion, discussing X-ray diffraction, uh, and now we're going to start talking about X-ray spectroscopy, particularly for elemental analysis. So a lot of this information, the majority of it, is going to be from our course textbook, uh, Materials Characterization uh, by Lang, uh, and it's Chapter 6. So that's what we're going to be starting uh, right now. So again, we previously discussed um, X-ray diffraction, and we discussed that we were looking at monochromatic sources of X-rays, and that was uh, produced by so-called characteristic X-rays, and that was from a given uh, target or anode material, such as copper, that we use quite frequently. Um, and so this is actually going to, so X-ray spectroscopy is a technique in which we actually use the characteristic X-rays to identify the element present in a specimen. So instead of knowing the material and using that characteristic X-ray with a specific wavelength or energy level, we take an unknown material and we look at the X-rays produced and we use that to identify what that material is. So it's kind of the, the reverse of what we did with X-ray diffraction in some ways. So we can identify um, the elements present in a specimen, so what the elements are, for example, iron, copper, molybdenum, whatever the elements may be. Um, but we can also talk about uh, quantities, so how much of these various elements um, are there. And so that's what we're going to look at with these uh, techniques. So the most popular uh, technique that we're going to look at, um, so this is the most common, is something called energy dispersive and x-ray spectroscopy. So we, uh, in this book, abbreviate this EDS. You may also see it um, uh, different ways. Uh, sometimes you'll see it abbreviated EDX, uh, and there's a few other abbreviations as well, but it's basically um, using the energy of x-rays to provide a spectrum in which we identify those elements. And the reason it's so common is because they're often quipped in electron microscopes. Let's go. So they're very common in what we call SEM, so the scanning electron microscopy, but they're becoming more popular and more common in uh, transmission electron or TEM uh, microscopy. So um, that's one of the reasons that this is the most common type EDS. Uh, we also have um, a general sort of more standalone type that doesn't have to be in an EM, um, and this is X-ray fluorescence. spectroscopy, or XRF. So this is a standalone uh, technique, and it uses X-rays. So in this technique, energy dispersive, um, since it's equipped in EM uh, microscopes, the reason it's uh, very common is because it uses electrons um, as the source of energy. So here with X-ray uh, fluorescence spectroscopy, we use X-rays. And, and that's what excites... Sorry about the spelling there the uh, emission of characteristic x-rays. So we use x-rays to actually emit more x-rays. So we use the term fluorescence to distinguish between the uh, source of x-rays, 
what we some call some usually call the incident beam. So this is the beam that's fired at the material that we're trying to identify. Uh, and then fluorescence is the secondary x-rays emitted. So we use x-rays to uh, emit these fluorescent x-rays. So the uh, incident are the source, and then the fluorescent are these secondary x-rays uh, emitted.